everyone, it's Pinterest Pro Anna here again with Facebook Live. And as you know, I told you yesterday that we would have a very interesting guest with us today. And we have with us Lisa, and she has a program called Manners to Go. And this is a full service company for choosing, for helping to uh, teach your children manners, uh, which is a very good program, I believe. Uh, and the New York Times and Parents Magazine and Fox News have all featured this program on the, in their magazines, on their programs, and so forth. But what I'm going to do, instead of me rambling on, is I'm going to let Lisa tell you a little bit about this program. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate appreciate the opportunity to be interviewed, interviewed by you. I am Lisa Ritchie. I'm founder of Manners to Go. And yes, Manners to Go is a full service company. And by that, I mean, we certify and train women and men across the world to teach the Manners to Go program. And it's for ages four through 18. And the licensees are trained to teach each grade level and they start their own business. And it's been a great opportunity. We have pediatricians, we have stay-at-home moms, we have retired teachers. So it runs the gambit of who is choosing to start a business. And it's a, it's, it meets so many desires and passions and needs, as you mm -hmm. well know, and there's so much interest. And I think we automatically assume, oh, well, kids aren't interested in this, but I have an example. A few weeks ago, I was in Connecticut at a boarding school in a, a really nice private school called Choate. And in fact, JFK and Ivanka Trump are all graduates of this particular boarding school in Connecticut. And believe it or not, the high school students, this is a school for high school students, the high school students asked for a business etiquette lesson. And I think that is wonderful. It was well received. We had well over 120 students sitting wow. in the room and this was an elective. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, so there's so much interest for all ages and mm -hmm. they, they need it and they're so curious and they completely understand that they're going to need this on just to build relationships. And of course, they're going to need this on private school interviews or internship interviews or in their future when they're interviewing and trying to land that position. Yes, I totally agree with you. Now, uh, do you uh, work with, say, for example, I was, uh, as a former teacher, I was with a group that we went to the uh, newly independent countries from the Soviet Union Mm -hmm. And before we went, we had someone to work with us in, you know, making sure we understood the manners of that country. Do you ever work with groups like that? Sure do. And on both sides of the fence. Mm -hmm. Many times when I work with corporations here, and that's under my corporate company called the American Academy of Etiquette. I also mm -hmm. work with companies around the world. And many, as you know, especially their tech companies have individuals that are coming in from other countries. Yeah. The presentation certainly assists them, but I've also been to other countries and been to the Middle East. And of course they were really curious how we conduct business here in the US as well as the UK. Mm -hmm. And a full presentation, a full day long presentation for Bahrain and the Ministry of Bahrain and come wow topics on how to do business and they were so respectful so nice and again so interested in how we do business and I had in that group I had individuals from all types of I had financial people from financial institutions as well as hospitals and the health and health professionals sitting in the audience when I was in the Middle East and we had a wonderful time over a meal and, you know, I instructed a full course international meal for them. And that is when, you know, you've always heard take a client out to lunch or um, invite someone over a coworker to lunch. It makes a huge difference. And they thoroughly enjoyed it. And it just it seemed to open up their hearts. And we had a lot of fun, as you can imagine. Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. It really is. That's fantastic. That's one of the things that I thought about when I was reading all your information, because I thought, you know, each culture has its own little nuances in, in all. As a matter of fact, 
I just recently acquired uh, a client in Hong Kong, and I thought, I need to break out my notes and refresh myself <laughs> on yeah. the proper etiquette here. Because really, you know, you can offend someone and not even know it. I know. And not mean to. I, I so. know. And I actually have a licensee in Macau, and she's American, and she lives over there. Her husband accepted a position with a company, and we actually spoke about that. She said there's a lot of, you know, interest for parents in, in China for their children to speak good English, but also social skills, to learn our social skills. Mm -hmm. And I will send you a link to the blog. I interviewed her and oh, okay. had some really interesting points. You know, we focus on the differences between maybe another country, but I loved hearing about the similarities. You know, parents, you know, are, are giving their kids the same games and spinners and all the same activities that we have here. They have them over there and they like to have fun. And uh, so I invite you to read her blog post about the similarity. And it's wonderful for her to share. Like I said, she is from, she's actually from Tennessee. And oh, really? Over in Macau now for about two or three years, if I remember correctly. Wow, that's that's very interesting. Do send me that link because I'd love to read it and I'll put it underneath the interview here because some other people would probably be interested in that, you know, that. because anything like that to me is just helps us to gain more knowledge about how to do business and not to offend other cultures. And I'll, uh, which is one of the things I say to people sometimes, you don't understand that's not what their culture does. <laughs> you know? So uh, anyway, well, that is awesome. Well, as you're working with these people, uh, with people, I shouldn't say these people, that doesn't even sound good. As you're working with people, uh, with groups, what would you say would be your top three tips that you give them? As far as, would you like to speak about as a licensee, as a new entrepreneur, what would my top three? Let's do both. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll go, yeah, we'll give a couple of tips for uh, just the individual as, as a parent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're in corporate. But let's talk about a licensee. And they come to me and uh, they're interested in starting their business. And one thing, and I have a couple of licensees that are just getting started. I have a new licensee in the Philippines and she has the exclusive rights to use the Manners to Go program there. And I have to say, I'm very impressed. Hands up, Rita. I um, am very impressed with her. And I give the advice to my licensees not to get caught up in the technology, not to get caught up in all the planning, get out and teach. Mm -hmm. That is your purpose. That's the fun part of it. Because if you get too caught up in the minutia, sometimes it's not fun for us. It depends on your personality type. So I really encourage them to get out and teach. Mm -hmm. A tip would be to, of course, or keep yourself organized, uh, you know, start with the business plan, have in mind, know your ideal target audience is another good tip. And then also those that are kind of swirling around, do I want to start teaching? How do I get started? You must have a curriculum, whether it's mine or someone else. You cannot go in unorganized and not knowing what you are doing in front of a group of third graders. The children today are smart and savvy. Mm -hmm. And to have a plan you need to have a curriculum that you use and that you teach from so that would be my advice for someone that is looking to start a business teaching matters to children mm -hmm. i will, would like to take a note and i'll send you this link as well yesterday it was brought to my attention at cbs morning news with a special report on tech addiction and i will tell you this parents with, it was so funny. I watched this segment on the news in the morning. Within five minutes of watching this segment, a parent called me and she said, I have a 14 year old son and he is having an issue having conversation with, with adults. Mm -hmm. Parents, listen to me. Your children are watching you. Mm -hmm. Put these away. Yeah. Stop. 
We mm-hmm. definitely have a tech addiction. And you can read this article. I've also given a link to the news interview where Silicon Valley insiders are taking a stand and they're making recommendations to stop this tech addiction because it is affecting us as a culture. It's mm-hmm. affecting us as a society. It's affecting parents. We are not able to build relationships because of this. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> and I, I see it in corporate when I get a call from an HR consultant or an HR uh, department. They used, to, they used to call me about professional dress. You know, people mm-hmm. kind of pushing the envelope on how to dress appropriately in the workplace. Well, that's still an important topic, but I have to tell you, building relationships, the art of the human connection has become my most popular topic. Building relationships, very important in our world. Yes, I, you know, I totally agree with you. And I'll never forget one time I was visiting a friend and she was telling me about something with her daughter and how they were sitting in the same room and they were texting each other. And I'm like, couldn't you just talk to each other? <laughs> yeah. I was working with a group of interns recently and they, they asked me something about texting or it was maybe a body of an email. And I looked at them and I said, it's your coworker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And walk around and talk to them. Yeah. Make contact with them. It makes I don't get it. Invite a coworker to lunch. You know, you just mm-hmm. think about before you send that email or send a text how you want this to be delivered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Now, how did you come up with the idea for this program? I actually started teaching. I've been in this business for 15 years and managed to go started out as an activity kit. Yes, it was sold into Neiman Marcus, Learning Express, Christian Book Distributors. So it was it was mass produced all over the U.S. And one thing led to another. And I started getting a lot of requests from schools, actually, for me to come in and teach after school programs. And so it, it actually just kept growing and expanding and I started to from my own curriculum and then I think as as business owners we recognize a need that there is only one of me and I can only be in one place on a particular afternoon and then as I was working with teachers and with parents the moms are saying hmm what exactly are you doing and tell me a little bit more about this one thing led to another, and that's how Manners to Go licensing and certification came into play. And also, a desperate need in the market. Manners to Go is beautifully illustrated, and it is relevant to children mm-hmm. today. It is mm-hmm. not an old method, and it's not something that you think of oh, your grandmother or your mother taught. This is it comes from a place of confidence and self-interest for children, and they respond to it, mm-hmm. which is the most important. I mean, if you're going to want to teach something, you want to teach something from a brand that represents you well, and uh, we certainly have our branding right on point on Manners to Go, but it really makes a difference to the child, and I think that, or to the teacher, and I think that is really very important. Yes, that's, it is very, very, very important, very important. Now, do you have any um, complimentary products with this, you know, like other things that you offer in addition to the Manners to Go program, or do you just do that in the licensing? I just do the licensing. We do offer two training options. We okay. offer video training. So that's the way I, you know, it's been wonderful. I mentioned I have a licensee in the Philippines. Her training was done from the Philippines via video, just yeah. like the US, live. All my sessions are live. We mm-hmm. work one-on-one together and you can see right here, it's, it's, it's just, we're sitting across the desk from each other. Right. Uh, I think I mentioned to you a licensee in China. Mm-hmm. We also have immersion, and I have to tell you, and that's a two-day intensive in-person training with me. And I am, uh, most of my licensees are now choosing the in-person option. And wow. I think that this goes to show people like that human connection. Yes. Focus is completely on you. Yeah. Uh, 
person that I'm training. We talk about your particular state, your particular city, how you can start your business, who you should target, the fees that you charge, and it is completely tailored. I just worked with a licensee and uh, she flew in from the Caribbean and I was able to assist her with her name as, and also just going down the technical side of building a business name. And so I was able to help her write a proposal that she already had requests for classes in her um, in St. Martin. So in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. So it's um, there's a lot. To, there's a lot of there's a big advantage, of course, of being in person one on one sitting across the desk from them. And of course, we have the chance to go to afternoon tea. Your dining tutorials are all, all done in person. That's incredible. Do you ever uh, give people manners to, of how to treat Southern people? <laughs> you know, I grew up in the South. Did you? Uh, uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in North Carolina. Oh, okay. I'm a Southern I, girl through and through. I, I've lived all over. I've lived in Atlanta. I've lived in Dallas. I've lived in the Northeast. I've traveled extensively and I get what you're saying. Yeah, because I'm telling you, people sometimes will say things to me and I'm thinking, why did you say that? You know? Yes, we talk about similarities or cultural differences with other countries, but we have to look within. And if you are one that has traveled extensively or you go on, gone on business trips, you know that there is a difference. There mm -hmm. is, really is a difference when you, when I go in as a speaker and I fly into California, I know my audience is going to be different than one yes. city in North Carolina. And a company hired me in Portland, Oregon. Mm -hmm. And um, I, the time I was living in the Northeast, and I think they chose me specifically because I brought something to the table because mm -hmm. of my experience mm -hmm. doing business in the Northeast and living in the Northeast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I would agree with that because uh, a lot of people don't realize the, the cultural differences within our country, you know. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, so that that's really why I asked that question. <laughs> I'm in the South right now, and uh, I have to tell you, I kind of smile because I grew up, my mother was a second grade teacher. And uh, of course, I grew up saying yes, ma'am, and no, sir. Oh, yeah. You know, after moving around all these years and living in Dallas and mm -hmm. living in the Northeast, they don't use ma'am and sir. Mm -mm. And so being back in the South, I kind of kind of smile to myself and take a little step back because people address me here as ma'am. Yes, 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 they do. <laughs> I, I grew up in the South, as you can tell, and I get tickled because when I go back and visit, you know, everybody is yes, ma'am, you know, and all. And it's it's nice, though. But uh, it is nice. But I have to tell you, I love the iced tea, the sweet tea and mm -hmm. Love having grits in the morning sometimes. <laughs> of course, that's not on the menu or fried chicken. No, no. Not <laughs> up there, but it is here. So, yes, it's yeah. Yeah. definitely yeah. Southern through and through. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I've experienced all of that. It's just kind of funny how, you know, the differences and all. Well, mm -hmm. now, how do you market your product, your program, other than, say, Facebook? What else? How else do you market your product? I consider my website a big engine, and um, it is the gateway to our business nowadays. Very my good. website is, is I put a lot of time, mm -hmm. and you can look at it and immediately get a good feel of what we are at Manners to Go. Mm -hmm. And we are, like I said, relevant and witty, and children are interested and they respond to it. I think, uh, as far as marketing goes, it of course it's word of mouth, and I think testimonials are very important. And you yeah. can see those on the website, and they're prominently placed. They have their own page, as a matter of fact. Uh, of course, um, it and being an international company, it's very important that we are represented really well online. Yes, yes, yes. And that's very good because I will tell you that you're one of the few business owners that I've interviewed that says our website, you know, and I'm thinking, well, yeah, that's your property, you know, and so you should definitely, you know, focus on that first and having the good website. Sure. Uh, it's, it's like I said, it's the gateway. And, uh, you know, I certainly when I'm training a new licensee, the focus is get out and teach because that's mm -hmm. the 
part. And that's really why they're coming to us. Mm -hmm. We want to get out and teach. Right. But also we focus when I'm training someone, there's a great deal of focus on the business side of starting your business. And we have that's one. Good. Yes. And each phone call or each session that we have, whether, like I said, whether it's a video or whether we're in person, we focus on social media. Mm -hmm. Of course I go through with them. This is how you organize your Facebook page. This is how you want to start thinking about your website and what you want your brand to look like, because this is a licensing program. They name their own business. And mm -hmm. so they have the fun of picking out their colors and creating a logo and creating mm -hmm. who they are yeah. on line and so great deal of focus and i also tell them there's so many social media platforms with instagram and LinkedIn and pinterest and i tell them to do pick one and do that one really really well because you can't start with six or ten mm -hmm. one and do it really well i totally agree i say that to people all the time you know pick say one that you do really well and a couple of others that you do pretty well but don't ever try to do more than three there's no way you can keep up with it you know? it's overwhelming mm -hmm. it really is. have you ever used pinterest for marketing yes i have i have a pinterest page and of course personally i really like it as well and i'm sure you're aware of this pinterest is a search engine uh, yes thank you thank you somebody said that <laughs> You know, I was just having this discussion with my husband and I, I'm a fashionista. I will admit it. It's, it runs through my core. I worked for Levi Strauss. I um, have, I majored in fashion merchandising and marketing. It will always be within. And uh, recently I was Googling, I love red shoes. All of a sudden I'm thinking, <laughs> I want to see what they look like on, you know, I'm thinking about yeah. red shoes and maybe a skinny pair of jeans. So I put into I put Pinterest red shoes, skinny jeans. And of course you get, you know, just this too many photos that you could even click through thousands of what it looks like to wear jeans and red shoes and maybe a red handbag. And, and of course I love red lips. Um, but that's the beauty of Pinterest. It is a search engine and I feel it is important. And again, it's um, part of your brand and shows, you know, you have the opportunity to show about your business, but also it's a way for the person that's searching to know a little bit about you and your personal, just like I love Instagram too. And, and, you know, I'll kind of show a little bit more of my personal side on a Pinterest page mm -hmm. and I will show a little bit more of my personal side on an Instagram. Mm -hmm. and that's and I, but I love Pinterest. Uh, we just decorated a new home and of course I had all my boards with my kitchens and, you know, bathrooms and, and, uh, four years. I love, you know, I have a yeah. black and white floor here in my four and I love it. And I think I got the idea from, from someone's Pinterest place page. And of course I keep up with my outfits from Pinterest as well. Oh yeah. You know, and that's what I try to tell people in the housing industry. You know, if I'm speaking to a group, I'll say, do you realize that people are decorating their homes and planning their homes on Pinterest? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they really are. They really are. And then my friend steps for Halloween. I got mm -hmm. idea. Mm -hmm. I was on, I think it was on Pinterest. I actually just wanted a quick snapshot, took it on screenshot of my phone and told my husband, this is it. This yeah. Is mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. You are so right. Well, is there anything else that you would like to add before we close out today? You know, I think we've covered quite a bit today, and I so appreciate the opportunity. There's nothing more than I like to talk about than my business. It's my heart, my soul, my passion. I have been in the business for 15 years, and, uh, you know, you, you, it, social media, keeping up with the internet is what we have to do in order to stay in business. And, um, but I so appreciate the opportunity. It, no one, you know, just to, to be able to spend 10 or 20 minutes talking mm -hmm. about it is, is such a pleasure. And I, I so appreciate it. Well, I enjoy it so much because I get to know more people. Mm -hmm. And then also I learn more about other businesses and I pick up tips. Yeah. No, I know. And Facebook yeah. Live is wonderful. I'm going to start using more of it. And I have some licensees lined up that are interested. Oh, good. 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 Yeah. So interviewing them. So stay tuned on the managed development. Ah, most definitely. Yeah. Facebook okay. Live. 
Well, well, thank you. I really appreciate it. As all of you can see, a very exciting, dynamic person here. And I will put those links that, she, that Lisa mentioned uh, on the Facebook page here so that you can also uh, go there and take a look and so forth. And I'll also put the URL for her website if you want to get more information about Lisa. So until tomorrow night at 7 p.m., this is Pinterest Pro Anna signing off and traveling on down the Pinterest Super 